Well, what I'm doing today is I'm, I'm going to talk about um, Moss Eyed and Hume, but I'm leaving some of Hume for next week because I've had a, a wonderful audio file from Brenda with her memories of Hume, oh, which I think is really, really good. So I'm going yeah. to use that. And also my friend Doreen, who, who Val knows, don't you? Um, she was a teacher in Moss Side and also she was brought up in Hume. And she just sent, gave me a whole pile of old photos yesterday, which I've only just scanned in and which are just, I don't think anybody's ever seen them before of the old Hume. They're really, really good. Um, so I'm going to continue it next week. So I'm going to start off anyway. And with all of these, it's like falling down a rabbit hole. There's so much there that you don't know where to stop. And I think that's been a bit of a problem. So I'm, I'm going to uh, start sharing screen with you. It's uh, about Moss Side. Now, I'm going to just focus on, on three elements. One is the destruction of Alexandra Road. Now, I don't, for those of you who know Manchester and who've lived in Manchester a long time, Alexandra Road will be, is very well known and it is much mourned. It was a, a major shopping area in Hume, and Mo, in Hume and Moss Side and Wally Range, really. It, it was at the intersection of all three areas and it was just wiped out. And I, I just feel this is a bit in memoriam of that. Then a little bit about the 1981 riots and then the significance of the Reno nightclub on Princess Road, which I used to go to. Anyway, so this is um, this is Alexandra Road as 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 was, and it's it's like a lot of these roads. Some of some have survived, but not many. Um, it was actually replaced by the Moss Side precinct, which, because of gang troubles and all sorts of other things, they eventually pulled that down too. So, but why they got rid of this fantastic shopping area with with decent housing above it, I just don't know. Um, but here we've got the Frost, which is a news agent, watch repairs, a book exchange. And here the um, you, you've got a, um, a furniture shop uh, with prams above it. And just to the right of it, you might not be able to see, is the UCP Tripe and Cow Heels mm -hmm. Rest Snack Bar, which... Um, I, I think it's amazing. Does anybody remember UCP, United Cow Product? I remember UCP. Yes, yeah. you see one in Market Street in Manchester. That's right. There were, there were a chain of them. It was not exactly yeah. a catchy title. Um, <laughs> tripe and Cow Heels. Is there anything more likely to put you off? I don't know. But it was, again, a very individual thing. You can see did the... Great, they did great steak puddings, as I remember. Oh, they did, Graham, yes. Oh, right, right. Oh, wow, yes. And really big, chunky chips. <laughs> yeah. uh, and this is um, where it was being pulled down. Well, I, th I think this might be the Moss, the Princess Road side of it, um, because but you can see all the lorries are there beginning to, to pull the whole area down and leaving it fairly devastated. This is back to Alexandra Road. You can see the title again. I think that's a butcher's middle hearse. Peter Pell was a men's outfitters and there was a, a chemist's. Now, this was on the corner of Moss Lane West and Alexandra Road. And I think on one side of it, which you can't see, is um, the Edinburgh, which was um, a, a late night club and Shabeen, of which there were several in Moss Side, which <laughs> I used to go to on and actually got um, rolled by somebody in it. And a friend of mine, a West Indian friend of mine, found this guy in the, uh, saw him, in, 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 he thought he knew he was, and um, berated him for, 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 for sort of trying to steal my wallet or something at that time. And the, the guy actually came and apologised to me. So, hey, those were the days, eh, when people did that sort of thing. <laughs> From 30 shillings and 8p, the number one mm -hmm. carpet shop. Freeman Hardy Willis, again, which is, uh, uh, is that still going, Freeman Hardy Willis? I don't think it is. It's a very famous shoe shop. No, no, yeah. no, not now. Gone now, I think, yeah. And the, um, the, and the next door, I think, was an off-license. Looks like an off-license to me. Uh, what sort of car is that in front? Is it um, an old Ford Pop? Yeah. 
it, was, it looks like a pop, yeah, or, yeah. or an Anglia. You know, it's a pop, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, for popular, yeah. Yeah. And Redmond, Redmond. again, Redmond. the chain, they were wonderful butchers and they had, I think they might have had cheese there as well. What does it say underneath it? Redmond's something or other. Um, they, used, they used to have stalls on markets as well. I, I don't know if they still yes, have them on indoor markets. I think you're right. But you can see it was very popular. Loads of people there. Mm. I like the shorts the book get boys wearing, they're the good ones. Oh. Yeah, but the, the character of the buildings above it is lovely, isn't it? Yeah, why we, re down? we replaced that with concrete and glass, didn't we? I know the, the in the sixties. The the amazing thing is that they started off in, in um clearances, what they call slum clearances. I refuse to call them slums, and the clearances by offering individual people. But after a while they found so much opposition to that, they did area clearances because the people doing the demolition wanted the whole area. You know, the idea of leaving some and taking some down was just an anathema to them. And I think yeah, the whole yeah. orientation of the planners wasn't necessarily evil or anything. It was just on the, the basis we know best. Mm. They didn't really mm. consult people about this. This is on uh, new, near Upper Brook Street in, uh, in 1964. And again, I think these were being pulled down as well the Upper Brook Street one. But again, those prams after which I, the pram wheels I always coveted when I was young. Mm -hmm. I, uh... They made great trolleys, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, we used yeah. to call them bogies. Did you? Bogies, yeah, yeah. Um, and this, again, is a similar one. The super mend, invisible mending. What's um, the car this time? It looks like, is it a Humber? No, I'm not sure that one. It looks, like, looks a like a Ford console or something like that. But as you say, the, the quality of those houses is very good. And it's, you know, it looks good, doesn't it? It gives yeah, it's not, it's yeah. not bad character in it. At all. And Look at that miniature turret. It's I beautiful. Know, yeah, yeah. And the ironwork. Yeah. 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 Sim it's, it simply it it's simply for the decoration, isn't it? And the, yeah, the yeah. joy of looking at it, really. It doesn't serve any construction purpose. And this oh, is, Green again, Moss side, this is Green Street panorama looking to Great Western Street from Talbot Street corner, which I can't totally orientate myself. Um, Graham, do you think that church is St. Mary's near where Loretto is? Um, I think so, yeah, because Green Street kind of runs along the side of Alexandra Park, doesn't it? Going mm. up towards Alexandra that's Road. Right. So. That's right. And you can see... Yeah, because I used to have a friend who lived in palmerston street which is probably just about where that fence is uh, yeah. which yeah. was just off green street but uh, yeah yeah i think that's probably uh, yeah. um what, what's it's in mary's did you say so yes yeah, well, it, it's now been made into flats it hasn't yeah, been but, but, yeah yeah but you used to go that way on the 62 bus to yeah, get into yeah town. well yeah it's still the, the main thoroughfare yeah, yeah, yeah. The and the, the old, there's an old um there's a school attached to it. I don't know if the building's still. I think it's still there. The building. It's not yeah, a the school primary anymore. school building. Yeah, yeah. 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 And this is in 1957 as they started. And you could, uh, you know, the, the place. Parts of the place were a mess, mainly because of bomb damage from World War yeah. Two. So I'm not sure yeah. whether this was the beginning of them pulling them down, or actual bomb damage. As you can see, there's a house for sale there. So maybe it was the bomb damage, and again. Kids loved playing in these areas because there were so many materials you could use for a start. They didn't see it as a... Look, look at the size of those chimneys on the left. They're extraordinary, aren't they? And they're actually quite substantial houses as well, aren't they? I mean, uh, yeah. presumably they've got cellars, so they'll be four storeys, won't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is much later on in 1990. The, uh, the, is that a... That strange advert up on the wall, isn't it? Mm. Oh, warning, isn't it? Yeah, it's a warning, it? not an advert, Bernard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You too can look like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well. But I think it's a wonderful picture of pushing along a trolley like that with a lollipop man there. A yeah. I think that the thing is about Moss Side, 
quite a lot of it remained and still remains and those streets are very very popular because they're small they're relatively cheap and they're now very well looked after so it could yeah. have been done on a much wider scale than than was, whereas hume was almost totally pulled down that was the yeah. difference mm -hmm. Did they think those subsidence that, you know, the bomb damage that the houses needed to be raised to the ground, or was it just a fashion in the 60s to, to put concrete and glass up? Well, they thought they were doing everybody a favour, I think, by putting mm. them into these wonderful new Le Corbusier, Le Corbusier style flats and things like that. Um, yeah. But it didn't kind of work out like that. We'll come on to that more with Hume which is a, a supreme example. Also, I think a lot of these houses didn't have bathrooms. So there's, no, there's they didn't have bathrooms that, and they didn't yeah. have indoor toilets, a lot of them as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of, well, now a lot of them have been adapted to have both. Um, yeah. And when you consider the size of some of the modern houses being built, they're not that different in terms of size. Even these very small mm -hmm. ones, these terrace, terrace streets. Now, um, my, my builder friend says they're rubbish, Bernard. They were chucked up by Victorian builders who didn't really care. They're generally only one brick thick, so insulating them is an absolute nightmare. I, 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 I don't know. I don't. No, I'm I not. Think sure. We have to be, have to be wary sure. of nostalgia here. No, I, uh, I agree. It, That's it, um, that is a problem. There, there was hmm. a problem, and and some some of the worst ones definitely needed pulling down. But it doesn't mean that they couldn't done a, a, a mix and match of pulling down and leaving it up. I, I personally feel areas that have been totally knocked over and nothing left, uh, even though you build mm. stuff on it, they, ne they never feel the same again. I, I've never liked Salford Keys because of that. I just feel it's mm. a sterile area now, even though it's all, all new and got some fancy buildings in. But that's just my view, my view. Um, anyway, yes, so moving on. Does anybody remember the Moss Side Riots in July 91? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. They, um, it's great. I think that's the Alexandra pub you can see. In, is it called the Alexandra or was it the Princess pub? No, the Alexandra pub, yeah. On the, the corner of Alexandra Road and um, uh, Princess Road. And that on the right of that is where the Reno is and the various other things. But as you can see, there were quite a lot of fires going on. And it was based, of course, on the London riots, which had um, started because of the death in custody, death of somebody who was uh, seen locally as a bit of a hero, but it was um, was obviously illegally killed. Was he? What was his name? I can't remember his name now. Um, it's an Irish name, Duggan, somebody like that. But anyway, they started. Mark, in... Mark Duggan. Mark, Mark Duggan, Duggan. That's right. right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He's on the. Um thing outside the central station isn't he the uh, memorial there the uh, circular thing for all the riots human riots in the world Peterloo and uh, was he? Oh, all I, that I didn't know that I didn't 1981 know I think so all right, all right. anyway the, um this is just somebody being carried away what's that in between I like the fact that the blood is, is looks as though it's on the truncheon doesn't it <laughs> <It's> yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look too great, does it? Whatever it is. <laughs> no. Uh, the, the, there, were, there were riots nationally, though. It wasn't were, just there, in my side, was it? No, it wasn't. It was made. It started off in uh, near Tottenham, I think, the main ones, and then yeah, they. And it was London and Bristol because London it was mostly Bri London, in, uh, Bristol. You weren't really yeah. a city unless you had riots. <laughs> But I, I remember them because on the day after that, I was in the pub with a friend in Moss Side when the, the police, the riot police came charging past. Fortunately, they didn't come into the pub. Um, but the, the second or third day of it, uh, the, it was, I think the, uh, the, the, the guy in charge of the police was Anderson, wasn't he? Or Anderton. Mm. Anderton. Oh, and, don't, and mention that, don't mention that guy. <laughs> no, he was no. terrible. And he, no, they went no, in yeah. with absolute <laughs> force and just hammered everybody, which may be mm. the guy in, in front. Mm. Anyway, going on to the, the, the third aspect of Moss Side I'm looking at, which is the Reno Club. That's, uh, it was next to the Nile Club, just on the corner of Princess Road and Alexander Road. And I used to, used to go to it with a group of friends, and it was the most amazing, amazing Afro-Caribbean based club, but open to everybody. And I had some excellent times here. But one of the, um, one of the people who used to go called Linda Brogan decided that she was going to investigate because it was locked down by um like everything else if she could sort of reconstruct the memory of the reno 
there, that's where it was on, on the the left here that's where the reno was there's no sign above it then you have the nile club and casino and i never went to the nile it was always the uh, the the reno that i went to introduced red stripe into manchester did they yes <laughs> uh, the, the, the caribbean beer so it's kind of well there were supposed to be all sorts of people who um, went to it they claimed in fact that cassius clay as he was known then came when he was yeah. fighting somebody it's great great music yeah, yeah, it was fabulous music. It was really good um, American music that they had. Did you ever go there, Graham? Yeah. Uh, very tentatively at first, because it was like uh, you were entering an unknown sort yeah. of environment, weren't you? And then everybody stared at you when you went in because you were white. <laughs> but uh, actually, it was, it was once they got to know your face, it was much more. Well, yeah, it was good. I, I, the only thing I can remember, one of the things I can remember is if a bit of trouble started, all you needed to make sure you do was stand up and pick your drink up. Yeah. Because people, <laughs> people used to get thrown across tables and your drinks would go with it. So you just got out of the way. <laughs> but there was, that think, didn't happen very often. <laughs> I think there was a sort of element of uh, danger about going in as well. Which there was, was, there was, there was. Yeah, it, you know, but, it, yeah. it was, it was. But it was, yeah. it was a surprising sense of, I, I just... The first time ever I felt brave enough to dance there it was such a, and that, that was their um, football team, which hmm. I didn't know they had. Great hairstyles. Great hairstyles. It's a <laughs> uniform, it's part of the kit, isn't it, the hairstyle? <laughs> like the moustaches well, they? they got nice moustaches. Who's the chap in the middle in the overcoat? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah. he was the manager. Ah. And this is uh, this is a memorial wall. I don't know whether any of you saw of that. Saw that it was one of the things that Linda Brogan got was to have a uh, an exhibition at the Whitworth, and this is the memorial wall of all the a lot of photographs that people sent in of their memories of it, which I think is wonderful. Did, did you uh, did you see it, Graham? You seem familiar with that. Uh, yeah, uh, was she the one that was responsible for the uh, archaeological dig? Ah, we come on to that. Are oh, you going to do that? Okay, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll... You can see it was there, a lot of excavating the Reno. This was <laughs> this seems to me a daft idea personally, but I good on her for getting it done. Um, she decided that they, they wanted to excavate it to see if there are any mementos of the, of the Reno. bodies in the cellar. <laughs> bodies, yeah. Which <laughs> is a really strange thing to do. <laughs> but that's I think that's a wonderful photo of it the excavation you can see there the new the new Hume and the new moss side at the at the end there the um uh sort of looking towards where asda is now i think various mm. other things that's a great photo of her anyway so that's that's that one it's, it's just grassed over now isn't it there's nothing yeah, on it's it. just grassed over there's nothing been done on it um and it's it's talking about the two clearances of Hume this was the um, Hume housing pre-clearance in the 1930s. The, the thing about Hume is that the people who lived there, uh, Doreen, for example, was there till she was 14. That's the Doreen I know, not our Doreen, if you see what I mean. And um, uh, uh, who else was it was, was in there with it as well? Brenda, Brenda. Oh, yeah, you, you know all about that. Were, were you brought up in Ma there, Maureen, or were you younger? Yeah, um, no, I'm older than Brenda, we're sisters. Oh, oh. Hey, well, that's a good compliment to play, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that thing that she sent you, um, a few weeks back when we, we helped um, support the Hume Hippodrome and we joined the, the festival that was there and, and she shared her story about Hume and ha what happened to her and it was really moving and it, it is a good thing to hear. It's a great effect to do yeah. that next week because I think yeah. it deserves something on its own. And what I'm going to do is is set it to photos of Hume that are relevant to it as well. It's only last five yeah. minutes, but it's really, really good. Very moving, I think. But it, I, I think, think it so. did have that effect on people. There really, really was a very strong sense of community there. And it yeah. just disappeared, and for um, especially for Brenda, because she was a teenage bride, went over to Germany as a teenage bride with a soldier, came back and it all disappeared. Mm. very very mm. dramatic mm. this is Hume in 1962 with kids playing as they do they just get on with it don't they they just play <laughs> like his pullover nice pullover that 
This is Chester Street in 1936. So some places, obviously, as um, Dave was saying, they were pretty gutted and uh, unfit for, for living even then, mm. um, very early on. Um, this isn't even bomb damage, is it? It's just, I don't know what it is, really. Maybe there's some clearances going on then. There's, there's another view, which is perhaps more typical of part clearance and part remaining houses, which you can see. And um, this is Hume, Low Moss Lane corner with City Road, another clearance era, area. The, the, one of the things I like about this, can you see that halt at Major Road Ahead sign? Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was a driving examiner. And um, he'd, he'd, one of the things was asking questions about the different road signs and what they meant. And mm. he says, could you de describe a, a stop sign at a, um, a crossroads? And the guy who was, who was um, puzzled for an age over it, he says, yes, it, the wording says, halt, who goes there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I thought was lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Ballet used to be based in Hume at one time. They the did, they did, and I've got details of that. Of uh, it was, um, it was at one of the one of the buildings, which I think might still be there. But the, yeah. the Hume and the Ballet did had it as their practice rooms, didn't they? They did. I went to a couple of meetings there when I was oh, wow, wow. on the North that, that was that was the Halle Orchestra's home as well. Yes, yes, it was, uh, was on, it on, the, the, on the Crescent. Yeah. yeah, big building, huge building. Now, go, so I'll be doing more about the old Hume next week when we go through Brenda's um, uh, piece and the photos that Doreen, Doreen Kirvin has sent sent to me. This is, I suppose, how they were hoping it would look. It must be a fairly early um, view of the Crescents, the famous Crescents, the deck access flats. And you can see oh, the trees, yeah. trees just look as if they've just been planted, haven't they? So yeah. they're not very big. But, you know, in, in theory, it looks OK, doesn't it, in some ways? Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing I found out, the guy who designed them also designed the Park Hill Flats in Sheffield. Have you heard of them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They were built yeah. before, before that, and they, they were done in a similar kind of style. But they succeeded. So this is where they were in 61. This is another photo of them, so not that dissimilar. And there, it's, it was one of the largest estates in Europe. You can see it's quite a very big area. And that is how it's been done up recently by uh, Urban Splash, a Manchester company. It looks quite good, doesn't it? Yeah. So, really has matter. anybody got any ideas why it worked in Sheffield and not in Manchester? Well, well, it didn't always work in Sheffield. I mean, that the reason why it's been done up because a lot of the places were empty. Mm. Uh, it has been a it has been a, a, a successful campaign. So they're all a lot of them are private now. You can buy them. Yeah, about one hundred and eighty thousand, two hundred twenty thousand. Well, that's it, isn't it? You know, you, you you're changing the nature of the community anyway to a certain extent when you're doing that. But you're quite right. It it wasn't it wasn't entirely popular, but it never got got pulled down. I think one of the reasons is that um, Sheffield is on hills. And I think it, it's entirely different when you've got that. And it was also that it was surrounded by other things. It wasn't being hemmed in like Hume was by the Princess Road on the one side and Mancunian Way on the other. I think there was there was less of that going on. Aren't they listed now, these, Bernard? Yeah, these they are. You're right, there. they are. And also, this I just found out, and maybe this, if we're ever going to um, have a trip out, a trip out to this, which is opening next year, I think will be really interesting. It's a two, 21 million found art center which includes um lots of workshop places where artists themselves can get um, their own um mm. studios the, the hills are very steep there and you can see for miles from the top before we go there we may <laughs> we may need help getting up them <laughs> yeah. well presumably you can park outside this i'd have thought <laughs> but if you if we're just going to the art center i think it'd be quite interesting to see what they're doing Sheffield is doing some mm. very interesting things. So that it, it seems to have worked, but it, or it seems to have been transformed effectively one way or another, even if it means changing the nature of the community that lives there, whereas just taking the whole lot down. 
And this, this is okay, when... But weren't the crescents in Hume defective in this sense that, that eventually they were riddled with damp and all kinds of... Of, uh, of, of yes, the cockroach building. So, so eventually, people didn't want to live there anyway because there were, you know, disgusting places to live in. And so, gradually, I mean, Hume now is a so much nicer place um, because it's all, you know, low rise basically and flat uh, houses and, and, and in, you know, individual dwellings. Uh, and it seems to work much better. So, it kind of proves that. You know, there is it is possible to build a community. Again, there is life I mean, after it. Yes, yes, you're right. You're right, and it, it's wrong, as Dave was saying, wrong to be too nostalgic about these things. Yeah. yeah. Because, oh. uh, but here is where Princess Road was extension was being made, and that that again, I was actually involved in a campaign to stop this the the Princess Road being extended into almost motorway standards, and I went out. Um, with, with a, 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 a local woman posting these things. And I was so bad at doing it that the police immediately stopped me because I look so guilty. <laughs> you've, got <to> do, <laughs> you've got to do something like that with a kind of real positive sense that you're meant to be there. <laughs> anyway, we, did, we didn't succeed. Oh, um, who's that famous actress who came to Moss Side that time? She's quite old now. Um, one of the Redgraves, Vanessa Redgrave. She came at the Princess Road School, which was knocked down as part of this. And she was in the SWP at the time, and um, or Re Revolutionary Workers Party. I don't know which one she was in. And she came down with her her false Cockney accent. <laughs> and I wasn't. Oops. Oh God, what have I done? I've, I've just had a tick on that. The um, I've only got ten minutes left. What are we actually looking at there? Well, that, we're looking uh, at that now. A, the, a road, a, a road construction a, for a flyover right through, or something. Right through um, Moss Side and Hume, um, with the, the town, town. You're looking from town going out there, and that's that's what's there now. Though it doesn't quite look right. like that. That was a kind of. Was I don't that, know the, this was the start of the previous fort. The, the, yes, the yes, previous the, the, fort, yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, I didn't okay. make that very clear. Sorry. Yes. But I'm going to rush on because, and this is the same one of the the kind of building work that went on at the time. Um, that was the, I think that is, is that, I think that might be the Parkway one again, I'm gonna leave that. Yeah. I think I've, um, something seems to have stopped me. Let's get out there. Right, sorry about this. All right, this is going back to Hume. This is Charles. They, of course, they were all named after famous architects and people like the one was called Nash President, <laughs> which is ironic. And you're quite right, um, Graham. The quality was poor because the budget was reduced as they went into making them and they didn't, they weren't allowed to have the um the the heating that they ha they normally had in these things, which was so it became it started off as area heating and it didn't work. Whereas in the previous flats they they were much better quality. Uh, and that was because of the Ronan Point disaster, if I think if you remember, mm. where the, which had happened quite recently, where they were worried about the, having gas in any of these buildings. So they went in yeah. for underfall heating, which never really worked properly. Um, yeah, because the, the flats that they built before they built the Crescents are still there. Yeah, they're better quality. Yeah, the, the ones they built after the war, that, because they were built to a high standard, and, and these were just pieced together like... Lego. You well, know, they, yeah, they did a lot of industrial construction, didn't they, at the time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, as, this is when the students, this is from a photo of a student took and they said the flats were actually quite comfortable because they're quite large if you ever went in one. They, yeah. were, on two, they were on two levels. They, were, they really were quite big, but the, it may be okay for students and young people, but not for, this is as they gradually declined, John Nash Crescent. And this is when it had its flowering, which I'll quickly come on to before we cut off. <laughs> <laughs> this was when it became a centre for students, young people, and then eventually they stopped in, I think it was in 1984, they stopped even collecting rents. Police didn't dare go above the first floor. Um, so they, they, a kind of a community of its, of its, um, of its own makings took hold, this is 62. Oh, these are 1992 kids as opposed to the 62 kids. 
Keep warm this winter, cause trouble. You can see the approach that they had. And that was the demolition of the flats in 93. And this, this is where the, um, the junction pub, which now is looks- Is it still there, the junction? Just about. Yeah, that's yeah. just where we, yeah, that's just where the, um, the Save the Hume project is on the same uh, road there. Just yeah, next still, the pub's still there though, isn't it? It's there, oh, yeah, but it's looking, there. Um, yeah. looking in a mess. It's closed and it's looking in a mess. I think they're just trying to- All right, okay. Which I think is a real pity because it's a, it's a real icon, that place. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it's it's built to designed ac across two roads, and it's, um, I think it's an excellent yeah. place. And I remember, I think I mentioned this last week, my um, lecturers at university said, well, because it was all being pulled down when I went there, um, the two things that they leave when they're knocking everything down are the two opiums of the masses, pubs and churches. And that was true enough. Mm. Oops, there's one. Uh, there it's beginning to get a bit more sort of literary. People with horses, very close. This, I think, is a great picture of the sort of people living there in um, in its uh, creative period. I think it's best to call it. Do any any of you remember the Viraj Mendes campaign? Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Where um, he was uh, uh, from Sri Lanka, and he, he 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 claimed sanctuary in the local church and was there for several years. Yeah. He eventually was um, deported, but um, and he's still still alive apparently. So. This is the Arban Cinema, which was a fantastic right. cinema. It was oh, brilliant, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it was a really good cinema there. Why it was yeah. called Arban, I never found out. Is that you know? Is it so it come first in the listings, do you think? I think it was the phone book, wasn't it? A A B nothing before it, something like that. I don't <laughs> think it was I don't think it's anything to do with anybody's name or anything. No, it sounds a bit German, doesn't it? You think that yeah. that's oh, Arban. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rusham says, stop the poll tax, join the march next Saturday. But it was a strange place because it, it was on its own, surrounded by yes. residential property, wasn't yes, it? It was, it was very strange. And just a pub next great, to There used to show great films there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, it was really, it was really yeah. good. This is Otterburn Close, you can see the, the groups living, living there. The graffiti was tremendous, look at that. And you can see the sound systems that they have, which again, if you're young and not bothered about getting to sleep, would be great. Punk's Picnic on Settle Walk in 1996. The PSV Club, which you might remember in uh, 1990 before it was pulled down. Lem CC used to, to, to live there. And no, Lem years ago. <laughs> and Steve Coogan, who was there for a while as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think also the Mark Kermode, K Kermode, Kermode, <laughs> the film critic, critic, he lived there when he was a student as well, and he's had a big influence on him, if you ever hear him talking about it. <laughs> Steve Coogan looking every bit the Alan Partridge. Yeah. More of the graffiti. I think that's a great one. Yeah. Well, burnt out cars. Whoops, get us a previous one. This was um, a performance of Hamlet, and that's um, a head in a plastic bag. And it was performed uh, by this company um, who specialized in this, and that was in the middle of it. And they did it in nighttime, but they couldn't shoot it then, so they got the shot during the daytime under the light of the street lamps. And that was the, um, some of the celebrations towards the end of it, when it, they, were, they were going to t cut, cull them down. It was a celebration of the... So it's very, very November the 5th-ish there. And that is the end of it. So. So. Excellent. Gosh, yeah. I made it. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. good. No, it was, um, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing play. It was an amazingly constructive time. It is claimed that the whole Manchester thing really started off in tune. Because as well as it being young people, they're really close to the city centre. The, um, the, the rent was either very low or none at all. And I remember going, I, I was very much a bystander at all that. And I did go and meet, go and see people there. But it was um, the people who were there, most of them, or the ones I knew, loved it. There seemed to be a very protective atmosphere to it. And in fact, it's interesting looking at the new Hume, which Graham talked about. 
there are still some elements of the old Hume left in that, mm. such as the um, Hume Garden Centre, I think, was an outcome partly of that, and also the um, Homes for Living, which are opposite it, which um, including the um, the cafe uh, Kim by the Sea. Which, uh, Actually, that garden centre is absolutely amazing. It's fantastic. It's really isn't it? big. It's got the most fantastic plants and everything in a cafe, and um, and it's but it's not straight lines. You sort of weave in and out of little areas and find something different. And it's open every day of the week. And fantastic always, things they have on for kids as well. Yeah, Steve, Stephen had his retirement leaving do at the yeah. Hume Garden Centre. Oh wow! wow. Yes. What a great place to have it. That's it, it rained. <laughs> They've got lots the, the, of the Hume Hippodrome still there alive, isn't it? It is. It it's is. And I'm um, coming on to that next week as well. You know, Charles right. Chaplin, Charlie Chaplin was there. Yeah, but it was. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know what state it's in. It's. it's, it's I'm, not, I'm not even sure where it's. Is it, is it somewhere near the Zion Centre on Stratford Road? Yes, it is between yeah. there. It's, it's behind the um, the Garden Centre. Yes. Yeah, because because that bit of Hume is been there a long is, is on yeah trouble isn't it but uh, yeah the, the zion you know. center is but i mean the the hippodrome was a well it was a strip club for quite a few years wasn't it in the yeah and then and became a bingo hall yeah anyway we're in the last minute so yeah. thank you very much yeah um, it's a bit of a rush but um uh, they, so for brenda's piece <laughs> next week okay so um see you all see you all soon it's the